These notes are going to include information on reaction rates and energy during chemical reactions. Our first question is, well, what is a reaction rate? What does it mean by reaction rate? Uh, reaction rate is basically just how quickly the reactants on the left are turned into products on the right. So how quickly does that process take place? That's what we call a reaction rate. Now this slide is actually a um, review from what, what we did last semester in one of the notes, I think notes number 28, um, talking about how do chemical reactions occur. Now remember chemical reactions um, are between you know, two or more molecules and those molecules have to collide with each other in order to react. So that's what we call the collision theory. Um, it states that the molecules in the solution need to collide with each other in order for them to react to make a new product. Now remember, they must collide with the correct orientation. Okay, that means they have to collide, you know, facing the right way, okay, with each other, and is, is another way to put it. They also have to collide with the right amount of energy. Remember, that's what we called activation energy, is the energy needed in order to, for the reaction to occur. And um, so here, down here, are a few, um, you know, kind of examples. So in this one right here, we've got uh, two molecules that collide, but they didn't either collide with the correct energy or the correct orientation, so they just bounced away from each other. Okay, so a chemical reaction did not occur. In um, B here, we've got two molecules that did collide with the correct amount of energy and the correct orientation, so we have now a new product, which is a blend of you know, those two um, in initial reactants. On the right is also another um, just picture just showing you know if, if reactants are moving too slowly, then they won't um, make a new product. If they're not facing the right way, they're not going to make a new product. Um, only when it's the right energy and the right orientation do they actually make a new and different product. So that's what we call the collision theory of how chemical reactions actually occur. All right, so in order to have a chemical reaction occur, we need energy. And um, sometimes okay, we need a whole lot of energy and sometimes we don't need as much. And so um, a chemical reaction can be classified as either exothermic or endothermic, depending on how much energy is either lost or gained during a chemical reaction. So we are going to start with the concept of exothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions release energy. Um, now you might be a little confused because you're like, well, I thought it takes energy for the reaction to occur, and that is still true. Um, if we see this reaction uh, chart here, which you should draw, draw this please, um, in your notebook. We see that the reactants, you know, need a fairly high level of energy and still they need um, some activation energy in order for them to actually, you know, um, bonk together to make a new product. But you can see that the products are at a much lower energy um, rating than the reactants. So overall, we actually had a release of energy overall because the, the products are a lower energy level than the reactants. So we kind of you know went up the, the, um, the hump of activation energy, okay? And then after that, you know, it actually released energy as the new products were being formed. So it's kind of weird to think about, but that's what's happening in an exothermic reaction. Now, um, when the energy is being released, it's being released in the form of heat. Okay, so that's why exothermic reactions feel hot. All right, because we have a change in heat, which is this delta H, okay, is, um, is a change in heat, which is positive, so that's why an exothermic reaction is going to feel hot to the touch. On the other hand, we can also have chemical reactions which are called endothermic. They actually absorb a lot of energy. So their 
um, profile, when we look at the energy um, versus the reaction pathway, is going to look the opposite of an exothermic reaction. Here we're actually going to have a huge hump up, okay, and our products are going to be at a higher energy level than our reactants were, okay, because they have to um, they have to absorb an incredible amount of energy in order um, for the reaction to occur. So the activation energy is really high. And so again, energy is, is absorbed in the form of heat, which is that delta H, okay? The delta H here is, means heat. And because the products are so much higher than the reactants, we had to absorb a lot of uh, heat energy in order for the reaction to occur. So if you absorb energy, it's actually gonna feel cold, okay, to the touch because it's drawing energy f away from your hand um, in order for the chemical reaction to occur, and so it's gonna feel cold when you touch it. So the, uh, the delta H is gonna be negative in this um, case, and it's going to feel cold. Our fourth question in these notes are, what factors affect the reaction rate of a chemical reaction? So how can we speed up or slow down chemical reactions and their rates? Because remember, the reaction rate is just how quickly the reactants go to products. So um, there are some things that we can do in order to speed up the rate or to slow down the rate. So um, we're going to take a look at five factors that affect how quickly or how slowly reactants are turned into products. Now the first one is um, it's basically just the nature of reactants. If you remember back last semester, we talked about the trends in the periodic table, and we talked about the fact that as you go down the um, a group, the reactivity is going to increase, right? So we have an increase in reactivity. And of course, it's the opposite for group seven. Seven increases um, going up. But for the most part, because reactivity increases going down, all of these down here are going to be just naturally more reactive elements than the ones at the top of the periodic table. So if, if we're going to choose you know, a metal to um, quickly react with something else, we might choose something down on the very bottom of the periodic table rather than the metals near the top of the periodic table. The second factor is concentration, the concentration of reactants. So the higher the concentration of the reactants, okay, the higher the reaction rate or the quicker it will go. Um, and that's because you've got more molecules here. So this is the higher concentration. You've got more molecules there that can collide with each other. Okay, the, if you've got least, you know, a, a less amount of molecules in um, your reaction, then you're, they're gonna take a lot longer to actually find each other and collide with each other. If you have a, a higher concentration of molecules, it will be much easier for them to just bounce off each other and try to you know, collide um, with each other in order to make a product. The third uh, factor for um, increasing or decreasing reaction rates is surface area. Um, now, the more surface area that you have, okay, so think tiny little pieces, all right, is um, lots of surface area, the higher the reaction rate. So if we take a look down here in this picture, um, if we are reacting magnesium atoms um, and we have a big chunk like this one, it's not going to react as quickly as if we have little chunks in the little suspension, okay? So the tinier the pieces, the higher or the quicker the reaction rate. The bigger the chunks, the slower the reaction rate. The last two factors that we're going to talk about when it comes to um, increasing or decreasing the reaction rate is temperature. Now, temperature um, affects reaction rates because it gives it, temperature is basically energy. Okay, so the higher the temperature, the faster the reaction rate because we've got more energy in order for those um, atoms to, you know, with those molecules to collide with. So um, the faster they're going, the more energy and the more likely they'll have, you know, that um, a sufficient amount of activation energy in order to make a product. 
So higher temperature is going to give a faster reaction rate. Slower temperature is going to, uh, or lower temperature, I say, should slow down the molecules so they might not be colliding with each other with the correct activation energy so you'll get less product. So temperature also affects reaction rates. Um, one of the reasons why our body temperature is um, you know, kind of on the higher side, 98.7 uh, degrees Fahrenheit versus you know, um, other animals that body temperatures are much lower. So we've got a more you know, efficient um, temperature for the chemical reactions that occur in our body to, um, to actually occur. All right, the last factor we're gonna talk about is catalysts and inhibitors. And um, we did talk about catalysts last semester. We're just gonna review that again. Remember, catalysts increase or speed up chemical reactions. Okay, they're chemicals that we add to the chemical reaction that speed it up or increase the reaction rate. But remember, they're not actually involved in the chemical reaction itself. So they're not gonna be a part of the chemical reaction. They just speed it up. Um, a really good example of a catalyst are enzymes. Okay, like this one here. Here's an enzyme, um, this green thing. And basically what it does is that it brings the two reactants together so that they, um, like in the right orientation with the right energy so that they can make the new product in the end. So um, it's like holding the reactant's hands and saying, here, hook up and go, um, you know, make a new product. So that's what a catalyst is. Now, um, that speeds up a chemical reaction. So on the other hand, we're going to have what are called inhibitors that slow down chemical reactions. So these um, are chemicals that are added to slow down chemical reactions or to decrease the reaction rate. And um, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in our bodies and in biological systems, we, um, we have enzymes that might speed it up but we also have what are called inhibitors, this purple one right here, that will actually slow it down. So an in inhibitor will um, bind to the enzyme so that these little um, reactants here cannot get to the enzyme so they can't make the product um, as easily as if the enzyme were free to bring the products, or I'm sorry, to bring the reactants together to make a new product. So inhibitors are gonna basically get in the way of a chemical reaction um, from occurring, so they're going to slow down the reaction rate.